All right, thanks, Amir. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining this session. So I'll talk about uh, domain knowledge enhanced deep learning model. Amir already <laughs> mentioned some of this uh, in his talk. So I'll try to see if I can uh, give you some uh, unique information. <clears throat> so after this talk, I, I think you should be able to uh, understand what is disease name entity recognition for biomedical natural language processing tasks and applications, and you'll understand how domain knowledge helps this type of applications. So in disease name entity recognition task, uh, you know that it's a fundamental uh, NLP task, which is like uh, information extraction, or you could say it's a tagging problem. So in biomedical natural language processing applications, uh, disease name entity recognition is an essential component uh, because uh, it can be applied for downstream tasks like patient profiling, clinical trial matching, and then uh, information retrieval. So for example, if you want to match some clinical trials to some patient profiles, then currently uh, some curators, they, what they do is manually identify disease names from eligibility criteria or gene names uh, from the eligibility criteria or from exclusion or inclusion criteria from clinical trials. And they also try to manually find patients that might be eligible for these type of trials. So as you know, many companies and many universities, they have been working on this research topic of clinical trial matching. So one of the fundamental tasks uh, to do it end to end, uh, we can apply name entity recognition first, and then that can be useful to uh, find clinical trials for patients. Also for information retrieval, so you can uh, tag biomedical uh, publications with some disease names so that indexing systems can use those information uh, in the knowledge basis. So as I mentioned, this can be cast as a uh, tagging problem, uh, especially sequence tagging. So as you know, uh, sequence tagging is another important NLP problem in this area. So given an input text like this, uh, new diagnosis of process cancer, so the tagging output should be like this, O, O, B disease, I disease, which is a bio schema that we used. It's a format to say if the disease name is uh, uh, here, it, is it the beginning or end? So beginning, or is it inside the disease name scope, or is it outside the scope of disease name? So as you already know from Amish talk that there are unique challenges for clinical NLP domain. There is widespread use of acronyms. So it's very difficult that if you, even if you have a dictionary uh, of diseases, you may not know what acronym is currently used in the current uh, context uh, of the paragraph of clinical text. Then non-standard uh, clinical jargons. So many healthcare providers, they have their own technical terms uh, to represent. Inconsistent document structure, then also, there is a need for effective de-identification of patient data. So that's also another kind of named entity recognition task where you have to identify patient names, demographic information to anonymize the data. And while doing that, sometimes there is noise induced in the clinical text. So that's another challenge. And finally, this is an important task. Uh, this is named entity recognition because if you misrecognize any term that will have uh, downstream problems. So for example, cancer has both disease diagnosis and also some special specialties or complex histologies that all together you have to identify as a disease name. So for example, if the disease name is uh, non-small lung cell cancer, so you have to identify the whole phrase to recognize a disease. You cannot simply say, just cancer. So related work in this domain has been uh, previously been rule-based, traditional machine learning based, uh, are based on handcrafted features. 
And we have seen uh, from our each talk, and also in, if you see the literature, there have been deep learning models, CNNs, RNNs have been used for uh, named entity recognition task and many biomedical NLP tasks with uh, leveraging external domain knowledge. So we uh, motiv are motivated from those intuitions and see if we can apply uh, similar things for this is named entity recognition task. So in particular, our contribution for this work was we proposed a LSTM CRF based model that uses domain knowledge on top of it for disease name recognition. We proposed a character mix approach of encoding character embeddings together with CNN and LSTM. And we integrated domain knowledge in part of the network in various layers to show the impact. And finally, we show that this approach improved the state of the art on NCBI scientific article data set. So let's start. So for domain knowledge based embedding, so we call domain knowledge here as kind of external knowledge that you can induce into the model. Uh, for example, here we used two kinds of embeddings, lexicon embeddings. We use medic uh, ontology. Medic means March disease vocabulary, which is a collection of disease names by combination of OMIM ontology and MESH ontology. So they have like about 10,000 unique diseases and 67,000 unique terms, including synonyms. So we leverage those information as lexicon embeddings. And if you see here how we do that, so we build a tree dictionary. So tree is a term uh, is induced from retrieval. So tree is part of the word retrieval. So tree dictionary is a tree search method that can represent the vocabulary in a way that can capture the morphological aspects of the words. For example, this is very uh, useful in clinical text because as you know, disease names sometimes have complex morphological aspects. Drug names you can recognize uh, by uh, looking at them because they have some special type of character combinations. So we used tree dictionary to represent the vocabulary for medic ontology so that once we have a new sentence in, in, in the text, and based on the sentence, we query the tri dictionary, and then we find that, okay, how many of those words are actually found through the key value pairs in the dictionary? So that will give us the similar type of tagging, so outside, beginning, or inside of disease. So that we will call as lexicon embeddings. For another embeddings we used is ontology-based uh, NLP engine that we developed internally that uses SNOMED ontology to find out if there is any match of words and phrases inside the SNOMED terminologies that we call as external tagging embeddings. So basically when there is a new sentence, we query the NLP engine and the output will give us if the words or phrases are found in SNOMED uh, ontology. So once we have this uh, two domain knowledges we call, uh, because we are learning them from ontologies. So those are concatenated together in the input. And we also have a character embedding for the words. So we learn character embeddings using a CNN model and also an LSTM model. Both of them we concatenate together to represent this character embedding for each character of the words. So that's our character mix model. And on top of it, we also add word embeddings, that is traditional word embeddings learned from GLOBE or word 2 vec based approaches so for each of the words. So all together will form our input representation for the network. And then, as you can see here, two connections are drawn from here up to the end for external tagging embedding and lexicon tagging embedding. So the takeaway from here is that we connect both of these domain knowledge based embeddings, not only at the front of the network, but also at the end of the network before doing the classification 
with uh, conditional random fields. So as I mentioned, this is a sequence le uh, tagging problem. CRFs are good at sequence labeling. So basically it means that output of this network will be the best possible sequence of BIO tags that will tell you if certain diseases are captured or not. So uh, in summary, we found that the addition of these embeddings at the beginning and at the end has a good impact because as you know, in deep learning what happens is you have some clinical takes, right? So you start from raw clinical takes, you do some pre-processing, you encode them into some representation, so you have a large dimensional vector space, and then you pass it to bidirectional LSTM. What it does is try to encode those information together uh, in a time step, sequential manner, so that the information get condensed, right? So after the condensation is done in both directionals, so from left to right, right to left of the words. Finally, we add the two embedding layers again before the classifier makes a decision. So condensation is happening, and then sometimes it, it's possible that these LSTM layers may lose the domain knowledge information because it's condensing all those into lower dimensional space through the LSTM cells. So what we found that if we can induce the domain knowledge again before making a final decision, that really helps. So for the data set, we use NCBI data set, uh, disease corpus, which has like about 800 annotated PubMed abstracts. So this is biomedical article with about 7,000 disease mentioned. And you can see in the training uh, validation and test set split that how many tokens were they are in total and how many of them are unique. And out of those unique tokens, how many annotations were uh, actually available in the training set. For the experiments, we used TensorFlow. We used word embedding uh, from GLOVE, 300 dimension. Uh, for character embeddings, we initially random, uh, randomly initialized them. And then the dimension size was 100. Character STM size was 100 with different uh, filters and window sizes for character CNN. And maximum word length we used is, uh, is 40, uh, number of characters with padding option. And hidden unit size was 300 and dropout was 0.3. And we used uh, stochastic gathering DCN and uh, Adam optimizer for learning. And we also use early stopping because uh, we don't need to overfit the model uh, by training it for a long time, so we said if the validation performance doesn't improve uh, for more than five epochs, then we stop. So here are the results for variation of uh, character embeddings uh, impact. So as you can see, when we used no character embeddings, uh, the scores are very low. With CNNs, we have better results. With LSTMs, we have some similar results. And when we combine both LSTM and C uh, CNN character embeddings, we have the best results. And this is like the graph on validation set. So the takeaway from this slide is that embeddings uh, learn from CNN and LSTM both are needed because as you know, CNN tries to capture the most important properties of uh, most important features uh, irrespective of word order. Uh, and here basically this is character order. We are trying to see which characters are making a decision in saying that, okay, this is a disease. And for LSTM, we also know that which character sequence is making a role in predicting whether this is a disease or not. So both sequence information and important property information is, are important. So the final results of our model, so we compared with uh, various uh, baselines, so vocabulary only, which means just the medical ontology, then the clinical NLP engine only, with some existing work that has bilayer stem CRF structure, but they don't use domain knowledge. We also compared with Amazon Medical Comprehend, as you know, they came out early this year. Uh, they made a service, so we used their service to see how they perform on this data set. So finally, we found that our strongest baseline, which is the character mix model, without domain knowledge, 
is like this course. When we add lexicon embeddings, results are improved. And when we add both embeddings, both before and after LSTM layer, we have the best performance uh, for, for this particular task. So we did some analysis of, of the confusion matrix. As you can see here, the left, uh, here it's the lexicon labels. So the column is the gold labels, and here uh, this is showing the lexicon labels. So as you can see the diagonal, the prediction of B disease from just the lexicon embedding uh, is very low uh, when we try to match with gold levels. And you can see inside disease is also uh, lower than that. So that's very difficult with doing when we do the lexicon embedding. But the right side, you can see this is for external tagging embedding for our uh, NLP engine that improves the inside of disease but uh, fails in uh, predicting the beginning of the disease. And this uh, confusion matrix is for the deep learning models where left is without domain knowledge. So you see more or less the diagonal is same except when we use domain knowledge, we have more uh, higher score for inside disease. So finally, uh, just to summarize that we proposed an LSTM CRF model for disease name recognition. We achieved new state of the art results for NCBI dataset and we are currently exploring, uh, already actually improved this model. Uh, didn't come out yet, so we used deep uh, contextual embeddings, and also we are using multitask learning uh, to improve this task because, as you know, that named entity recognition is not an isolated task. You can combine this task with other NLP tasks like question answering, machine comprehension, or summarization. These related tasks, you can learn a common representation from the data, and if you try to learn these similar tasks together, that should help uh, all the tasks separately as well. So thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and ask me. Thank you.